Hi everyone, my name is Elena Zede and I'm the founder of Dogs Boris, a non-profit organization based in Athens, Greece. Today I will talk to you about population management during crisis response operations. Let me first present you what we do at the Dogs Boys. Uh, we are a leading expert organization on crisis response and since 2017 we have managed two major floods and five major wildfires that have spread in the broader area of Attica. We fully took under our care 1,638 animals and managed to uh, develop our own crisis response protocols based on our experience and the specific circumstances um, in Greece, uh, focusing on prevention, crisis response operations, and of course, the post-crisis management of the population affected. So when we talk about crisis response operations, uh, those include the preparedness phase, the rescue, the transfer of all animals affected to the pop-up shelter and stations, and of course the post-crisis management. Whereas in Greece, when we discuss about stray animal population management programs, we mostly discuss about trapping, neutering, microchipping programs, and then we have two alternatives, either rehabilitate the animals to their uh, natural landscape or transfer the animals to an animal shelter facility. Uh, we strongly believe that these two um, processes uh, are linked and that crisis response operations could actually serve stray animal population management programs um, to become more efficient long term. Uh, and this is the main uh, focus of uh, this presentation today. Stray animals in Greece today are dealing with many challenges. So it is estimated that we have more than 1,800,000 stray dogs and 2,300,000 stray cats in Greece today uh, that are mostly living in rural or suburban areas and those areas are the areas mostly affected by natural disasters during the summer. Uh, we, when we accept uh, these animals at the pop-up stations we realize that 69% of them, of animals that could be domestic, owned by somebody they are not microchipped and 74% of the animals that we assume they lived as strays, uh, we have no history uh, about their previous conditions. So we basically accept animals that we have very limited information about their previous whereabouts. Either they are domestic, they, they are owned or strays. And so this realization made us include stray animals protection to our preparedness and risk assessment plans for crisis response operations. And that led to a comprehensive mapping of stray animal population within the areas that we expect to be affected. Of course, we suggested that municipal police performs checks on domestic animals, own animals, where they are microchipped and if they're not microchipped for them to become microchipped and have the fines imposed. Uh, registration of all animals that are fostered within municipal or private shelters so that we know in advance how many animals should be evacuated uh, from a shelter uh, in times of crisis. And of course, to include the evacuation of stray animals within the evacuation plans uh, that police is performing during the crisis. And to have uh, trained rescuers going to these areas and actually removing animals, whether strays or domestic, from endangered areas on spot. So what actually happens is that all animals that have been affected by a natural disaster are transferred by the rescuers to an emergency pop-up shelter that we have set up to respond to the crisis. And so the process there is that we scan all animals for microchip and we microchip the animals that are not microchipped. We provide uh, neutering to all animals that are not neutered. We provide vaccinations, blood tests, and we start treatment protocols immediately. But most importantly, we uh, foster uh, animals that are confirmed as strays. We do not uh, allow them to return uh, the streets. And we have a full adoption program for all animals that 
either uh, are strays or they have not been reunited with their owners for several reasons. Uh, owners that never claim their animals, owners that they have been proven to passively abuse their animals, so we do not return them um, back. And of course, we provide uh, behavioral support with our dog trainers. Uh, this is how we treat uh, every animal that is checked into our pop-up shelter. And this is uh, how we link uh, stray animals population management to our operations at heart. So the rationale and the methodology behind uh, these protocols is to ensure that we do not leave an affected area within the same population that we actually uh, found it. So we have on-site neutering programs to ensure that no um, stray or semi-stray animal is uh, returned to um, the, its previous condition uh, within the capacity of producing more animals. Uh, we microchip every animal and we insist that those animals become registered either to the municipality or the local animal welfare group or ideally to their owners. Uh, we have very a strong foster and adoption program so that we transfer all the animals from the pop-up shelters to safe homes. And of course, we strongly collaborate with local animal welfare groups to identify uh, which animals are confirmed as strays and of course, which animals these people know that they belong to somebody and we uh, uh, have to uh, return the animal to them or uh, if the, the, the animals have been previously uh, abused passively so that we move forward with our fostering and adoption program. This process requires the collaboration of all local stakeholders involved and so we all work together for the rescue, the rehoming, the medical treatment and the foster and adoption uh, programs to, to be uh, succeeded. Um, even when we uh, rehome an animal to their previous owners, we always ensure uh, that this animal is uh, given back, neutered, microchipped, and with a full medical condition report. And that helps us not only for public uh, safety and health reasons, but, all, but most importantly, to ensure that we do not have more stray animals within the affected area uh, the following years being produced by the animals saved during the crisis response operations. I will now present you the case study of Philly, a municipality in uh, western part of Attica with a major uh, problem with uh, the overpopulation of uh, stray animals, specifically dogs. And this area has been affected by uh, the wildfires in August 2023. According to the local animal welfare group, they have been mapped almost 845 stray dogs in the broader area of the municipality and approximately um, 432 within the areas that have been affected by the wildfires. Um, out of these animals, uh, 339 have been registered at our pop-up station. So you understand that each one of these dogs received the level of care that I described before, um, including, of course, neutering and microchipping. And none of these animals, not even one, have returned to um, the um, municipality of Philly as a stray. Um, most of these animals have been fostered and adopted, with the exception of 14 that are uh, also fostered within an animal shelter uh, facility. The fact that we have actually removed almost half of the stray animals um, population, dog population, uh, of an entire municipality through the crisis response operation is a huge success um, and a best practice for other municipalities to follow uh, according to uh, our protocols. But most importantly, we have helped a lot this specific area to control better the population remained. Of course, this is a, a never-ending process until all animals are removed from the streets, but the fact that through the crisis response operations, the stray dog population has been severely limited was um, an outcome that we 
uh, appreciate as a success of our protocols and will build on for other municipalities to follow. And so considering what we achieved in Philly area, we thought let's talk about long-term strategies uh, that they could work both on the prevention uh, space and the actual crisis response space so that we help uh, the management of stray animals population long term. Uh, and so now we're planning to implement continuous initiative for managing stray animal population uh, by training all stakeholders involved so that they could have way more robust neutering programs within the areas affected. Uh, we partnered with local groups and we enhanced their collaboration so that they could map effectively uh, all stray animals within uh, a specific area that is endangered to become affected by wildfires. Um, we are very active in the development and enforcement of policies uh, that include routine checks in uh, the microchips of domestic animals. This is a huge issue in Greece at the moment and ensure that these policies are also integrated within um, the municipal uh, policies for the protection both of humans and animals. Uh, we push for uniform crisis response protocols. We believe that our protocols, because they are very tailored to um, Greece, they could be applied uh, across all agencies, organizations and municipalities in Greece, uh, cultivating a common understanding about how crisis uh, response operations could serve uh, stray animals population management within the affected areas. And of course, we are huge ambassadors of our foster adoption programs and um, the programs that actually ensure that no uh, stray animal will be uh, re returned to um, the previous circumstances of surviving at the streets because people are very incentivized during crisis to help animals. Uh, this is a very specific condition when we could thrive with foster and adoption programs. And we have the methodology to help municipalities and animal welfare local groups to succeed in these terms. So the benefits of developing crisis response protocols, having stray animal population management in mind um, so far, uh, is improved animal welfare and um, reduced suffering of the animals affected, uh, enhanced controls on non microchip domestic animals. It has become a common understanding that we need to know uh, which animals are owned and which animals are indeed strays uh, when a crisis happens. Uh, enhanced collaboration between stakeholders involved. I have personally trained already three municipalities uh, on crisis response operations and the main focus of this meeting was actually to protect um, stray animals population not being reproduced until we reach our next crisis. Uh, and that leads me to my next point, preparedness for crisis response um, can indeed increase efficiency in stray animals population programs, especially when we have the collaboration between all stakeholders involved, which is what we are looking for. And of course, evacuation plans, uh, either for communities or shelters, or whatever the case may be, to include stray and domestic animals specifically with the support of the police and the fire department. Our key policy recommendation for bringing together crisis response and stray animals population management are basically uh, ensure that crisis response preparedness plans uh, also include uh, stray animals population management those two programs are linked and they should be uh, worked together within the preparedness phase uh, to ensure that uh, there is uh, a, a basic framework for all stakeholders to collaborate and to facilitate collaboration uh, on a municipal level, on a national level, on a local animal welfare groups level. Of course, ideally by the uniform application of uh, common protocols. Um, to ensure that pop-up stations and shelters are available at every municipality during a crisis and that all the people that are managing uh, um, animals affected are trained under the same protocols. Of course, police needs to do their job and 
uh, ensure that all domestic animals within endangered areas are indeed microchipped. And of course, foster and adoption programs need to be further developed, uh, especially given the fact that people are way more interested in helping these animals when a crisis is spread. So where we are today, we have launched our training programs for municipalities, animal um, welfare groups, fire department and the police. We plan to run this program uh, next year through 75% uh, of municipalities in Greece. We standardized our crisis response protocols so that they can be available to uh, all municipalities, um, either rural or urban or suburban or uh, island municipalities. We have uh, a volunteers and community training program for people to get involved and actually realizing how they could help animals through the crisis response operations all year through. And of course, we're very proud that um, the Ministry of Internal Affairs in Greece is actually considering creating a task force about crisis response, um, uh, protecting animals during natural disasters. And we are really proud that we will be a part of this process. So thank you for uh, your attendance and I would be happy to answer in any question you may have.